Hi friends, Pastor Courtney here. Happy Tuesday. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Just wanted to hop on and share a quick Devo thought with you today that actually came to me when I dropped off my son for preschool this morning. I have a wonderful four-year-old named Wyatt and a six-year-old daughter named Audra. And Wyatt likes to hear the same stories over and over again. Maybe you have a kiddo like that. And this morning on the way to preschool, he asked me to tell him the story of the baby in the water. Now you might think that sounds like Moses and you would be right, but this story actually happened to us and it made me think a little bit deeper about God's love for us today. And so I wanted to share that story with you and some Devo thoughts for your Tuesday. Now, when Wyatt was one and Audra was three, we would go on a lot of walks and I would pop them in our double stroller and we would walk to a bridge that's not far from our house. And one of their favorite things to do was to drop little pebbles or sticks or leaves on one side of the bridge and race to the other side to watch them come under um, on this little river that's by our house. And so on this particular day, we were doing that. We were having the best time. And we got back in the stroller and headed home and we realized something. This toy that Audra loved more than any other toy, it was a baby doll named Stella that we got from a very special friend of ours at the time, was missing. No Stella. And we started to think, did we bring her? I could remember that we had her, but where was she now? We were looking for her everywhere and we decided she must have um, been taken out at the bridge. Maybe we just left her on the ground. And so we headed back to the bridge and as soon as we got there, my worst nightmare came true. I saw Stella face down, floating down the bank of the river. Um, just little bit by little bit, she would get stuck on the side and then go a little bit farther. And I thought, oh no, oh no, what are we gonna do? And Audra saw her immediately and said, mom, you've gotta save Stella. She's almost gone, you've gotta save her. And at that moment, friends, I, probably should have and I could have said you know what enough's enough Audra she's too far gone we're not going to be able to get her and I should have left it at that but I saw the face of my precious little girl and I knew how much she loved that doll and her very most precious possession was that doll Stella and I knew how much I loved her obviously and so I did something a little bit crazy I strapped my kids into the stroller told them don't move a muscle and I started grabbing over some brush on the side of the, the bank of this river to try and ease down to reach out and grab Stella. Now this would have been easy if it was a gradual descent, but it was very sharp. And so here I am on the side grabbing some bushes and any branch I can and trying to lean out as far as I could to grab her little doll. Now the doll was stuck against two branches kind of on the, the bank of the river, but the water was rushing fast and I could see that it was going to be pulled far down if I didn't get it quickly. So as a last ditch effort, I got as close as I could, reached out as far as I could to grab Stella and I didn't get her. I went all the way under the water, head first, <laughs> very dirty, mucky water, tried to stand up. It was pure mud at the bottom. So my shoes came off, lost the shoes forever, never to be seen again. And just trying to paddle, doggy paddle, get out. But before I did, I thought, I've come so far. I've got to get Stella. Mm. I could have said, enough's enough. I'm trying to just get out of here. This probably is not the wise choice. But you know what? I knew how much Audra loved Stella and how precious she was. And so I went a little bit farther. And I reached, I grabbed, I swam against this current that was way stronger than I realized. And finally, finally, as I reached for Stella... I didn't get her. She went even farther down the river. And so one more time, one last ditch effort, I jumped as far as I could, went face under again and grabbed for her and grabbed her onto my chest. And she was muddy and smelled awful and almost unrecognizable. But that was Stella. That was Audra Stella. And while I looked at her, I thought, oof, I don't know if she's ever going to be the same again. But you know what? I knew that to my Audra, Another Stella just would not do because that was her Stella. That was her baby. That was her special toy. And so I scraped and scratched up to the top of the shore where my kids were wide-eyed in the stroller, could hear me splash. And Wyatt is just looking. He can't believe it. And Audrey goes, Mom, I thought you were dead. <laughs> 
said, well, thanks a lot. <laughs> I thought I was there for a minute too, but I showed her this Stella and as muddy and yucky and sm smelly as Stella was, she grabbed that Stella to her chest and she said, my Stella, my Stella. And she just loved her no matter what she looked like, no matter what she smelled like because she was hers and she belonged to her. And the, the dolly that was almost lost, never to be seen again, was found and she was brought back. And it just reminded me that there are so many times when God could say to us, enough is enough. You know what? You've gone too far. I've done too much. I've proven myself to you over and over again. I've kept every promise. You know what? Enough is enough. But you know what? God in his crazy love for us, <laughs> he does the exact opposite of what human wisdom dictates. And he comes after us farther. He goes more. <laughs> he runs harder after us. And you know what? That's because he is love. We can see in God's word again, he doesn't just love us. He is love. And that's what sets him apart from every other religion and every other God and idol that people worship, that he at the very core of who he is, is love. And the love that we have in us is the image of him. That pure love that says, you know what? I'm going to go farther. I'm going to reach deeper and I'm going to go after that lost one. And that's what he does for us. He doesn't say enough is enough. He goes after us and continues to <laughs> do crazy loving things to get us back in his arms. And when he does, you know what? He doesn't look at us and say, ugh, this doesn't look good. This isn't what I intended. He says, you know what? No other one will do. This is my child. And out of all the billions of people, he doesn't want a replacement. He wants us. He said, that's my son. That's my daughter. And no matter what, they are mine. And I know them and I draw them into my heart. And so this morning, I just want to remind you of a very familiar passage, but one that can strike us deep if we let it today. It says, what do you think? Matthew 18, 12. If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, Will he not leave the 99 in the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly, I tell you, he's happier about the one sheep than the 99 that did wander off. And it doesn't say that that sheep is clean and pure. It doesn't even say it's the best one. It's just one that belongs to him that's his. And I want you to know today <laughs> that just like that Stella meant to my Audra that you mean so much more to God than you could ever imagine. And I want you to store up that love and that belief and that truth in your heart today and let it sink in deep that no matter what happens, God goes after you because you are his and you belong to him. And for God, enough is never enough. He sent his own son Jesus to die for you. He went the farthest distance at the greatest cost because you are worth it to him because you are his and he calls you his own. I love you so much and I have hope you have a wonderful day.